Hey YouTube Frag Home, welcome to my top 10 fragrance purchases of the year 2015. Um, a few weeks ago, I released my haul video of 18 fragrances. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll put the link down below in the description so you can click on that and take a look. Um, this top 10 is based on those 18 fragrances I bought. Now we have eight casualties. Um, there's eight fragrances that's not gonna make this top 10 list. Um, the haul video was in no uh, way shape or form in any order of preference so this is what this video is all about on um, the eight casualties I'm gonna be quite honest there are some pretty solid fragrances in there you know I got some pretty good taste I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna toot my own horn here but uh, there is some eight uh, eight fragrances that are absolutely outstanding does not mean they're crap um, it just means they're just didn't make the cut at the moment um, this is my personal taste, my personal feelings of my best purchases in 2015. Now these are fragrances that are not particularly released in 2015. These fragrances could have been released back in the 90s, it doesn't matter. Um, these could have been blind buys or they could have been calculated buys. Um, fragrances that I've already smelt before. So I'm going to count, count it down to uh, from you know the number 10 right down to obviously the one that I think is the best of the bunch from my personal opinion. I love shooting this kind of video and going back like five years later and just see um, which ones didn't make the list and uh, which ones actually stay in my current rotation because that is something that's really primary for me to, when purchasing a fragrance now is will it make my, my, um, my rotation my steady rotation especially purchasing flankers is something that's very dangerous for me just because usually if it's a favorite fragrance of mine the flanker usually just comes in second all the time so uh let's get to it um enough chit chat let's take a look at the top 10 at number 10 it is a surprise of a fragrance i even said it in my haul um it is from the house of bentley um this is my first purchase it was a blind buy Bentley for Men Intent. Um, the surprise of 2015, in my opinion, yes. I truly did not expect this particular fragrance to work that well on my skin. Um, every time I've worn it, I've loved it. Um, it's so good that I actually have no problem blind buying um, the Absolute version. Um, that is next on my list. I'm going to blind buy it. I don't even care. Um, this is a fragrance that can be purchased for under 30, 40 bucks um, online easily. Um, so I'm gonna get the absolute version for sure, just because this has put such a mark on me and it already has made one of my top 20 lists. I believe it was winter of 2015. So it's one of those surprise fragrances. At number 10, at number nine, it is a flanker. I do talk about flankers quite a bit and there is quite a few in this list, um, more at the tail end here. At number nine, it is uh, a flanker for uh, La Nuit de l'Homme and this is the intense version. Um, don't get the name wrong guys it's not an intense version of the original um it does have a different composition um it is one of my most worn in this top 10 to be quite honest um fall and winter 2015 i wore quite a bit of this stuff it is a solid flanker and that's basically why i made this list um does it overshadow the original la nuit no way shape or form um, however, it does have its own identity and I really, really enjoy wearing this one. Um, this one's easy to wear, casual work, uh, dress up, um, really is something that uh, may perhaps hit my rotation a little more often. So let me intense. Uh, at number nine, at number eight, another flanker. It is from uh, our very popular fragrance in our community, the one by Dolce Cabana. This is the one um, Eau de Parfum Concentration. Um, this one again, same thing with uh, La Nuit Intense. It's not one that will overshadow the original in my personal opinion. Um, however, I think is a worthy flanker, something to uh, check out if you can. Um, don't over pay for this, don't pay over a hundred bucks for this stuff, but if you can get it for cheap and you're a fan of the original and you kind of want to get a flanker of the original, this one is the one to get. Um, it is a compliment getter. That's, uh, I, I believe I even said that in my haul video, it is. Um, I wear it casually, just like the intense version. It's one of those uh, fragrances that's actually very easy to wear. Um, those two fragrances, these guys I've noticed 
Um, we're in the summer months, obviously, as you know. I'm in Canada. Um, here, oh, we're getting hit with a huge heat wave right now. Very hot and humid. Um, however, during the nighttime, um, especially when it's a little cooler out, these two guys work very well. And those are the type of fragrances that you're going to see that, you know, a lot of people complain about longevity projection and all that stuff. It's not worth uh, you buying for the winter. Well, you got to start using your mind and and utilize these fragrances. You know, they got some shortcomings. How am I going to utilize it? Um, summer, summer nights, um, this stuff. Um, the one is great for summer nights and the one EDP is the same. On number seven, talking about summer, this is probably one of the best summer fragrances in this list. I think I only have like two or three that are really meant for summer and spring. Um, you guys know me, I'm a huge fan of darker fragrances, but this is from the House of Miglier and uh, Pure Wood did not make this list, but Ultra Zest did. Ultra Zest, um, if you would have pulled me and said, um, you know, I blind bought this and I blind bought Pure Wood to be quite honest with you guys. So um, if you pulled me before I smelt them both and said, which one are you more excited about? I would have said Pure Wood, uh, hands down. Um, Fresh Scents from Miglier, just to be quite honest with you guys, do not, they just don't have that that greatness to them as the darker scents do they're not impressive now Miguel cologne's an excellent scent don't get me wrong uh iceman's a very interesting scent sun essence is a piece of shit um <laughs> this one truly shined and it's actually continuing to climb and the juice levels getting below this halfway star here so i'm starting to get a little nervous because this was um actually a limited edition i don't even think it's available in stores anymore however very cheap online right now so Bye, bye, bye. That's all I can say. Um, one of the best summer fragrances released by Miglier. Yes, by far. Um, I, I really like the blend of this fragrance. That's where it won me over. The citrus is where they won me over with the high-end citrus. It really did pop on my skin. At number seven. At number six is from the house of Christian Dior. Dior has two fragrances. So they had four in my... Hall, if I remember correctly, two of them made this list. At number six, we got Ziad on Pat first. So it didn't crack the top five. However, I can't deny the quality of the DH lineup. The whole freaking lineup is absolutely amazing as far as quality goes. Pat Fur has stepped up to the role. It's upscale, it's high end, it's high quality ingredients. You smell it. You pretty much smelling it from the atomizer right now. You know it's a DH fragrance. Um, and that is saying something. Um, this thing, um, again, I'm one of the, one of those fragrance reviewers that are, that is saying that, you know, if you own DHI, this may be one of those fragrances that is used for the same thing. Um, however, I'm really liking what Pat Fern is doing. Um, I'm trying to wear it more often now. I'm trying to find ways to, to wear it. Um, summer nights, it's kind of hard to wear this kind of, the DH lineup is very hard to wear in the summer. Uh, once fall, uh, fall happens, um, this thing is going to get a little more play from me and I want to see uh, what it's going to give me. But uh, at six, it's no snoozer. Now starting off my top five purchases of 2015. Um, this was an early purchase of the year and it really had that number one spot for most of the year to be quite honest with you guys until my latest uh, last kind of purchases so it, it dropped it down but uh, I would say it is from five to one this is a very close race as far as quality goes wearings and et cetera, et cetera, that I would put in as far as categories to make which one's number one and which one's number five. So this one from the house of Davidoff, the finally something uh, interesting from the house leather blend, um, a smooth leather, one of the better finds that I kind of pride myself into finding. I, I love finding stuff that's off the beaten path. That's not available in North America. That is something that I really pride myself into finding. Um, and this one obviously has received very high rankings from me in some of my top 20s already. Um, it's something that I believe is going to be in my top 20s for years to come. Um, I really like the blend, no pun intended, of this one. Really well done from the House of Davidoff. Now at number four, again from the House of Christian Ziar. This is probably the most talked about and probably the most hyped and most purchased fragrance of 2015 in our fragrance community. This is Five Delicieuse. Five Delicieuse can be number one on anybody's list, uh, except mine. 
At number four, um, a very solid Tonka-based fragrance on the market. Probably one of the best. Um, the only thing that kind of kills it is um, just because I'm so familiar with Tonka and Pediata, and I think that's a superior scent, in my personal opinion. Um, kind of knocked it down a few, a few spots as far as how excited I am about the fragrance. However, um, really high quality as you come to expect from the house of Ziad, a well done fragrance. At number four, at number three, um, this seems like, if you take a look at my top 10 list, this seems pretty much like a designer list. Um, I don't have too many niche based uh, scents here in this uh, list. is because primarily I have been purchasing a lot of designer scents, kind of going back to my roots. Um, at number three, this one is the best um, this is the end of the designer lineup as far as uh, my purchases in 2015, but this is the best designer purchase that I feel um, in 2015. That was Hugo Boss Boss Bottled Oud. Um, I can't say enough about this. Um, the Oud and the Green Apple in the opening, um, it meshes so well. Um, the blend is great in this fragrance. It really um, Surprised me from the House of Boss, to be quite honest. The introduction is pretty much perfect, in my opinion. Dry down's great. Might even surpass Boss Bottled as my favorite Hugo Boss fragrance. Um, that's hard to do. Um, you know, you've seen a lot of flankers in this top 10 list already. I like flankers. Um, you know, if it's done right, it's done right. However, most of the time, flankers do not surpass the originator, especially if it's one of my favorites. Um, this one might actually do the unthinkable and actually surpass Boss Bottled, which has kind of a, uh, it's one of my high school scents, so it kind of has that soft spot in my heart. But Boss Bottled Oud, um, if you're a fan of Boss Bottled, um, even if you're not a fan of Boss Bottled, you actually have to try this one out. Um, a great scent. At number three. At number two, um, it is from the House of Amouage. I cannot build a top 10 list without an Amouage scent, especially if I bought one. And I did in 2015, I bought Journeyman. And Journeyman is, <laughs> uh, this thing stands out. Um, you know, really, um, if you did pull me on the rest of these fragrances from three to 10, and you put Journeyman against them, a Journeyman would be crushing them in almost every single category. Um, Amouage fragrances are that great. Um, I absolutely love every single composition. Journeyman is well, well done, well balanced, well blended. I can just keep going and going. Um, this is one of those fragrances that I'm excited for the cool weather to return and to start uh, utilizing more and more often. So Journeyman on number two. Now number one is a fragrance that I'm actually wearing quite a bit this summer. Um, I don't think it uh, is only summer and spring fragrance, even though it's, um, it kind of reminds me of Pulp that's hiding back there. Pulp is a fragrance that was built for summer and spring. However, it is a year-round fragrance. It just has enough oomph to it to really last. And this fragrance, there's not too many fragrances that can do that. And Vagabond Prince has released a gem here with Enchanted Forest. Um... I was blown away. I told you guys in the hall how blown away I was with this fragrance. It is by far the best fragrance in this entire hall, in my opinion. Um, again, I, I grade these fragrances when write, uh, writing up a top 10 like this. There is different categories. Um, the one point that really pushed this over the top is being number one. Um, is being a fresh fragrance that shows oomph. It shows complexity. It shows authenticity. Um, there is so much in this fragrance that, you know, um, uniqueness, um, the black currant note is the best by far that I've smelled in any fragrance. Um, that just gets major points there. So uh, if you did have to, if you pulled me and you said, what is the top three in your last haul? This is what it is. Enchanted Forest, Journeyman, Boss Bottle Lude. If you have the same taste as me, you like Boss Bottle, you're a fan of Amouage as a house, and you kind of like some fragrances that are unique in the summer, like a pulp or, or something like that, Enchanted Forest is going to be right up your alley. Those three is, is what I would recommend from my, my fragrance haul. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. This was a, a fragrance uh, idea. 
that I had in my back pocket for oh, several months now. Um, this was actually supposed to be released in January with my haul video, um, and it's been just sitting there collecting dust. So um, I, <laughs> I made myself put on the camera today and get this out of the way for you guys to enjoy a new top 10 list from me. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And again, if you haven't seen the haul video with the 18 bottles, go check out the link down below in the description. And again, please let me know on my top 10 list. I love hearing from my subscribers. Let me know if my list is out of whack or you're, you're completely um, in agreement with me. Um, have you tried any of the fragrances from my haul yet? Um, did my haul intrigue you in some fragrances? You tried them and now you're in this top 10 list and you're trying to see where I ranked the fragrance that you tried out. I'd like to hear stuff like that from you guys. So hopefully uh, I see a lot of uh, participation in the comments below. Thank you for watching guys. Have a good one.